In the last lecture, we learned how to create a simple Blink application that you can use to control a couple of LEDs on your Arduino Nano 33IoT. And this lecture, I wanted to take this a step further and show you how to use the virtual pins feature in the Blink application and use that to call basically any kind of function you want or to add a lot more functionality to your sketch. So what we'll do is that we will use a virtual pin in Blink, so-called virtual pin, to send a PWM value to the LED connected to digital pin 2 on the Arduino uh, Nano, which is PWM capable. First of all, I just wanted to quickly show you some documentation that you'll find useful for reference. Go to the docs.blink.cc website. This is where the documentation for Blink lives. You'll see on the left side, we've got the table of contents. Go down to Blink main operations and click on virtual pins, and that will take you to the relevant section in this documentation, which is recommended reading. But really quickly to help you get started, I can show you that in order to get a virtual pin in Blink to do anything you want it to do, what you've got to do to f is first write uh, the Blink write block in your sketch, assign it to the virtual pin that you want to use for controlling this segment, and then inside that block, you can put whatever code you want. Uh, the only thing to notice is that the blink write function will grab a number that is sent from the application on your phone to your sketch, and then you can grab that using the param variable convert it into an integer and then store it in a local variable or uh, it could be a global variable as well. From that point, you can do whatever you want with this uh, information, with this number in this case. So the way that I have implemented this in my sketch is to take the sketch that as we left it in the previous lecture, I have just changed its name. So you can see here now, I call it Blink underscore Arduino underscore Nano 33 IoT so that it's easy for me to identify it. And I have added a new function called LED PWM, which receives a PWM value, an integer. And you can see the implementation of this function down here. It's very simple. All it does is to use analog write and write that value to whichever pin I want, which is a PWM pin, which I have set to be pin number two. This is how I have implemented the virtual pin functionality. So I use the blink write function. I pass the virtual pin that I want to use to control the segment in this part of the code. And the blink application will send a value which I will capture using the param variable, convert it into an integer, and then pass it on to the LED PWM function. I also note that because I have implemented this function down at the bottom of my sketch, but I am making reference to it much earlier, I have used the signature of this function up at the very beginning so that the compiler knows that it exists and that the function is defined further down. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be getting an error message at this point, in line 15 in the compiler. Uh, the only other change is that in setup, I've set the mode of the PWM pin to be output. And that's it. What I'll do is upload the sketch. And while that is happening, I'm going to go over to my Blink application, stop it, and add a new widget. Let's take the slider. I'll just move it down, say here, and extend it to take the full width. Now let's go in it. And for the pin setting, I'm going to go to virtual, oops, virtual one. Because as you can see, I've set the blink write function to receive data from virtual pin one. Okay, so virtual pin one, I can give it a name if I want. Let's call it PWM. And uh, I'm using the, the default configuration for the PWM function on the Arduino Nano 33 IoT, which is eight bits. You can see here, 
in the Arduino documentation, um, the PWM resolution by default is 8-bit for the right resolution. So we've got a range from 0 to 255 for the PWM value. For decimals, we don't have any, so I'm just going to have no decimals. And I want to be able to see the value changing as I'm sliding the slider uh, left and right. So I'm going to uh, switch off the send values and release only. I want values to be sent constantly as I'm changing them. And just click OK and play. And let's try this out. I'm going to slide the value up on the slider up and you can see that the LED is becoming brighter and that's as bright as it gets. Turn it off. There we go. Now I wonder if the buttons are still working now that I've essentially hijacked this pin. No. Yes, actually it is. There's a bit of a lag because it's a public server so uh, the, the ping time is uh, a few hundreds milliseconds so it takes a bit of time for the update to reach the public server and come back. This is one of the big advantages of having a local private server is that the lag is minimal. It's uh, barely perceivable if at all. All right, so this is how you can use uh, virtual pins. So you can see with virtual pins you can basically do anything you want without having to worry about uh, the physical limitations of whichever model of a device you have chosen here. So in this case, it's the Arduino MKR1000. Okay, now one thing that I want to do in the next lecture before we finish this section is to show you how we can reuse the little application that we built here on Blink and replace the Arduino Nano 33 IoT with an ESP32. And we'll do that by doing very simple changes to the application itself. And of course, we'll have to upload the appropriate sketch on the ESP32. Let's check that out in the next lecture.